Um, well, we, I couldn't be happier with the work we got done this week. We literally uh, practiced Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, in some capacity, Tuesday was a lot like today. It was strictly our Devo guys and select twos that hadn't gotten a lot of reps that we felt could benefit from getting even just 12 to 15 periods, about an hour and 15 minutes of work. Um, we got heavy work day on Wednesday for our twos and our Devo. And then uh, yesterday, actually, we had the entire practice uh, devoted to UT Chattanooga, uh, they've done two games. Obviously, they play on Saturday uh, at 4 o'clock, so we'll get that game added into their breakdown. But uh, took the first two games to kind of uh, put together a game plan on what we know at this point and practiced uh, pretty good yesterday. Um, had a chance for a lot of our guys to get healthy up to that point. A lot of our main guys have been playing a lot of our reps, didn't do anything uh, football-wise, did the conditioning until Wednesday, and then Wednesday was modified Thursday. So uh, like where we're at, tomorrow is like Monday of game week. Um, because we're playing a Thursday game, so tomorrow the, the, the kids have the day off, um, and it will jump in Sunday. It will be like Tuesday preparation and so forth. So excited for that opportunity. A lot of good work during our bye week. Do you use this opportunity at all for self-scout, or is that too early? Uh, self-scout for the coaches, not the players. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. self-scout. Um, you know, I think the unique part to this is obviously our offense. It's the first time defense has been through the system twice. So, um, you know, there's uh, – I also think that the competitive game against Indiana uh, was was critical for us to have that on, on paper. I know you've talked about this, but how do you like your schedule here with this by the Thursday? You get more time going into the full Big Ten schedule. Yeah, so when the schedule came out, we had, you know made some original. I mean, the original schedule we were supposed to start opening up at Wisconsin, right? Uh, and then that got um, uh, eliminated with a with a conference when they came in and redid everything. So that's when I approached, uh, or before that, when we were opening up Wisconsin, that's when I suggested the Week Zero game. And I knew that was going to give us two bye weeks. I really didn't know how it was going to play out, uh, but uh, I couldn't be more excited. I said this all along. They have three on the front end, four, an off bye week, a uh, four-game schedule, and then a bye week into five. And then this week was really crucial because we're jumping into a Thursday game, right, to have that ability to have a normal game week here is, is, is much better than trying to go from a Saturday to a Thursday. Brett, has the Devo portion, like that it seems to be a big deal for you guys in mm -hmm. the mind. Has that always been a philosophy? Or is, have you evolved that over time? Oh, uh, no, it's always been, I've, I kind of always say the only way to get good at football is playing football. And, and if we can, you know, the NCAA a lot of times limits the amount of Devo work you can do in season because 20 hours is really not a lot of time to get game prep in. Um, so in in normal game week seasons, it's really hard to get a lot of Devo work. Uh, but by week, we, we you know, I just kind of uh, told those guys out there today, you know, I, I would bet you a large portion of, of Division One teams, 131 teams, do this on a Friday. They probably just send everybody out the door, you know, give them a brunch, make them make a lift weight something. But we got, I, I, I actually had, uh, I think I got five of my coaches out there. I, I, I sent the other five out on the road. I'd much rather, from a recruiting standpoint, have all 10 out there, but uh, to have Barry here, Ryan here, uh, Andy Boo was here, um, uh, who else is here? There was uh, uh, CP was here, uh, and then I'll go out tonight, but um, I just felt it was important to get a good amount of work with these guys. I, I brought up the point when I was really at New England, um, there's really not a limit on time on practice, so we would always end practice with about 15 to 20 Devo plays. Uh, and I remember when Jimmy Garoppolo was leaving, they told me the number of players that he had in Devo over a four-year window taken with him on the plane to San Fran that really was big. I saw a guy like J.C. Jackson last night, right, who I remember doing Devo with him as a rookie uh, undrafted free agent to see where he's at now. So I, I know these things work. I mean, those guys are your scout team essentially during the week. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they get a chance for you to run your stuff this week, how big is that? Yeah, you? it's so first off, we don't call them scouts. We call them look, right? And, and I think that's a very big thing. It's just the English language. But scout has a demeaning attitude to it, in my opinion. Like. If you have a lot of kids even during recruiting, am I going to come in and be a scout team player? I'm like, no, I'm, no, you're not, right? You're going to be, a, I don't say this, but you're going to be a look team. So they're they're looking to simulate our opponent as good as we possibly can, right? So we may have two guards, right? But my right guard plays completely different than my left guard, even though they're on the same team. Different body types, different skill sets. So not only are they looking and emulating like UT Chattanooga, they're going to look and emulate the left guard versus the right guard. And that's a big deal with us. It teaches them football. It teaches them football IQ. Uh, the, the 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 value in this is 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 unbelievable. But just for them to be able to like maybe run your offense this week, yeah, yeah, yeah they uh, um, I think for sure offense. You know they get a chance to run uh, calls that Coach Lundy's coming in from the sideline to hear the young linebackers out there calling plays. Um, we also had almost really our true two offensive line out there. You know that was going through a lot of uh, uh, Barlev was out there, Whiteneck was out there. Um, uh, you know just really good reps for those guys as well. Did I see on the Jared Beatty practicing? Yeah, Jared started practicing. Um, he practiced before Wyoming, like maybe on Wednesday, Thursday. I think he, he finally got cleared Tuesday afternoon after practice. Uh, practice Wednesday, Thursday. I saw his mom after the game, uh, 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 with the Wyoming game. She said he just 
can see that smile on him. And then he's, yeah, he had a couple moves on a pass rush the other day. Um, uh, looked really good out there uh, today. Had an interception I saw yesterday. So, yeah, he's full goal back with us. Did you look at FCS, FCS schools? Is Chattanooga, uh, obviously, a top 10 team. Yeah. Are they one of those? Maybe when federal type teams are they that good? What you saw? Well, uh, you know, I think a couple things jump out to you. They have uh, you know really good players. Um, uh, they have a, a really an offensive lineman that uh, could start anywhere. They have a defensive tackle that could start anywhere. I mean, doesn't let doesn't matter. Both of them play in the NFL. Um, they have a running back I think is very talented. They got a lot of really good players around them. They're very well coached. Um, uh, coach has done a tremendous job of. You know, getting those guys to play very hard, very fast, and and, and uh, very productive players, really offense, defense, and special teams. They've taken advantage of the portal world too, right? So, so a lot of different things. They took uh, Kentucky last year, who's a really good football team, uh, to the fourth quarter. I believe it was a 28-23 game or somewhere in that ballpark. So, yeah, they're they're a very talented football team and one that we got to uh, prepare our tails off of because I know they're coming over here with the idea of one thing is making history for themselves. The rules used to favor FCS schools with transfers, but you, now you get the portal. Yeah. Is that hurting them some, or maybe maybe not at all? I don't know. Does it matter? I, 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 it does matter, but I I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I, are you seeing better players at the level? You know, I think uh, the the you know for me, for me I saw um, I was watching the Seattle um, Denver game right, and uh, Shelby Harris uh, was on after practice right, and or after the game he was a a guy that was at Denver got traded to Seattle and he had a few things to say after the game and he was a kid that I recruited very highly recruited kid out of Wisconsin he was with us a couple of years and then. Situations came up where he had to transfer to Illinois State, which at the time was FCS, came down here, had a really productive career, and now I believe he's been in the league 10 years, right? And so that used to kind of be the story, guys getting opportunities that maybe after they had um, um, situations that weren't allowing them to be at the place they were at. Um, now that exists for everybody, right? Um, I'm glad that we got our guys here, right? I, I, I look out there every day and see guys that I'm like, you know, what an impact they're having in their program. Not necessarily as a starter, but just depth. Rotation, ability, um, attitude, personality. Uh, so it is kind of everybody under that same guy rule now. So yeah, it's it's an effect in college football that's that's unprecedented. What do you want you guys to do this weekend? I mean, I'll be, I mean, what, tell me for you. Our players? Yeah, your players. What's the, you know, what's your uh, so it's very important today. We had a. a I started off the meeting at seven o'clock. Um, I talked about one issue that I really wanted them to think about while they're watching college football tomorrow. Um, I always tell our guys, don't just watch football, learn football, right? And you know, I, I, I brought up a couple points to them that I know they'll be able to watch tomorrow through other games and see how it affects them or it affects the team that they're on, right? And put ourselves in that shoe, in that situation. So hopefully our guys tomorrow from 9 to 11, they got voluntary treatments and rehab. Uh, I'm sure a lot of guys will be in here for that. And then I'd really like them to sit back and enjoy college football. It's one of the greatest things they can do is, you know, sit and watch and learn. As you build your program, are you okay this flexible schedule to get standalone games? Like how important is that for you to – play on a Thursday or a Friday or whatever day? I, I like um, routine, right? Like I, I, I preach to our guys, uh, it's on the doors when you walk in and walk out, live all your routine. Like I think that the more you treat and teach guys to to process them through to Saturday is good, right? Um, uh, the, this Thursday game, even though it's a Thursday game, we've had a full week of preparation for it, and it's even going to be the same as they've done on these first, uh, first three games. So it's a little bit of mixed bag, I always say, in the schedule, right? Just... Show me the schedule and I'll play it. I really can't control it, but I, I do think our guys are locked into the process of getting to game day, and that's why I can say to, you know tomorrow's a Monday and Sunday's a Tuesday. So to the boss point, like it, it, tomorrow is a Monday in game week, but it's a Saturday in real life. I know what happens on Saturdays in college, right? I just ask them to. They're not going to school tomorrow like they'd normally be doing on a Monday. You have the ability to eat, sleep, drink, walk, talk, do anything you want. Just think about on Sunday, it's going to be one of the hardest practice days of the week, so to have that in mind. Uh, Devin Wilderspin has maybe always kind of been a pull-the-trigger guy like yeah. Ryan once, but what have you maybe seen just from his overall development where he's kind of turning into that shutdown corner, I think? Well, well I, I think it's very evident uh, that Spoon is very confident, and I think when players play confident, they play fast, they play physical. Um, he's confident because he's seen a lot, but he's learned a lot, right? And um, his football IQ is, is at an unprecedented level that I think since I've been around him. Um, a very, very confident young man. Um, he sees things formationally. So like when we were out of practice, uh, he didn't practice on Wednesday. So uh, one of the things as a corner, you always see football like this, right? You always see football inside of you. As a safety, you see things like this. It's in front of you, right? So the advantage of safety is he has a formation. So you have to rely and lean on safeties to tell you things as a corner. So I wanted him to watch the whole practice from a back-end view to see formations 
and see how he can help himself if he's getting that information, you know, in real live game situations. He sat back there and he talked the whole time. I mean, he was talking to the defense, like and talking and talking. It's just another way to bring personality out of him and leadership. So I, I couldn't be happier, for, A, for Spoon, right, but for us as a defense as well. Do you really like the way the guys practiced going into Virginia? How do you carry that over into this week? Yeah, it has. Um, I think it has. Um, our kids know when we do well and when we don't do well. When we know we went through, uh, you know, last spring, I, I made a very big point. We get 15 practices by NCAA rules, right? And and they know the practice. That if you went up and talked to them right now, what practice did we get back? I think they would tell you, right? Like, I felt we got better 14 and 15. And I made a big deal, a big deal about the one we didn't. Um, those chances and those opportunities are are very very um, unique and, and very precious, so we can't afford not to use them. And uh, hopefully, it'll show up this week to say that. What have you seen from Gabe just in the days? I mean, he had a pretty big game on Saturday. What, what have you seen from him just this week? You know, approach? a lot of stuff we saw in recruiting. You know, he's big, he's physical, he's powerful. Um, with young players like that um, that have big ears, like Gabe, literally, um, I made a clip. Um, I, I remember this very clearly. So my first uh, Thursday travel meeting. So I do a meeting on Thursday um, before a game on Saturday, and I usually show something or talk about something that's football related, but not specific to our game. Like big picture, uh, so I was teaching him. I was teaching a room. I used, I think, uh, wide receiver, DB, uh, O line, and D line, and I showed right. Okay, this guard, like I was saying earlier, this guard and this guard are on the same team, coached by the same guy. But when you pass rush them, this guy you can hit this move. This guy, it must have been tackles. It was definitely tackles. So Gabe came up to me and he's like, "Where, where can I get that film?" I'm like, "I have the full. I have an area called my folders, which is only me, only because I don't want people getting and messing up my stuff." So I said, "Well, it's in my folder. I'll send it to your folder." He's like, okay, and, and ten minutes later, he sent me a text. Is it there yet? Right? Like, the urgency for him to get better is like unprecedented. Um, like he, uh, Coach Kane, I'm sure will tell you, uh, Coach uh, Walters, anybody that's dealing with him, like his immediate need for information and and and, and, and desire to get better is is instantly. Um, it's just a really impressive, kid. When you head out on the road and your guys head out on the road for out during this bye week, like, how much of it is a fact finding mission on your part? I mean, you've talked about it before. Hitting that history teacher, hitting that math. Yeah. Teacher, hitting that well, that's quite honestly like I let you know five or six guys go this morning so that they could go into school and talk to the custodian, uh, the assistant principal, and do all that. Uh, I, I said specifically, and I'd like to hear if they don't. Right when they go to a game tonight, like we're going to watch this this kid on this team. Right, go shake the hand and talk to the coach on the other team. Right, find out what what he has available. I think it's a sign of respect that I always did. Uh, Hayden Fry taught me to do that when I was young. Right, and now I try to teach my coaches. Um, learn from everything on that field. Um, it's a fact-finding mission on the guys specifically we're going to see, but also fact-finding on everybody else. Is Josh McCreary able to practice at all? He's getting close. He's not practicing yet. He didn't practice with the team, but he is definitely in, a, in, a, in an upward track. Is that just like a – you said how much he can go, but is, yeah. there, is there a plan to try and get oh, him? Oh, yeah, there's there? a plan. I'm not going to share it with you. Right. <laughs> I'm going to ask, right? Yeah, exactly. He, he He's progressing well. Um, I, um, I, don't, I don't foresee this week being it, but uh, I think there's definitely a chance to grow. It's all good.